Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be jumping into the next batch of reactions for Red vs. Blue Season 11 with the Chorus Trilogy. Uh, this batch is going to cover my reactions to episodes uh, 10, 11, and 12. So I hope you guys look forward to that. And this is actually going to be the halfway mark of Season 11. So a lot of Red vs. Blue Blood Gulch Chronicles vibes with this season so far. A very slow starting pace. I like how Miles, rather than trying to one-up uh, project freelancer he decided to dial it back take it where it originally started you know what i mean thematically of course uh with the reds and blues shenanigans uh freckles in the picture uh, uh, lopez dos point oh in the picture uh and trying to you know establish a central level of reds and blues and the comedy and the humor and the banter and all that other stuff and there's obviously some other things happening um i think that are going to start elevating and and escalating uh probably with season 12 and especially season 13 from what you guys have uh from what you guys have said with like your enthusiasm of me watching this show for the first time uh, so a lot of things are really going well I'm excited to get into the second batch however there is a bit of housekeeping that I want to get you guys up to speed on so we're on the same page so everyone knows where we are moving forward at the time of me recording right now just a couple hours ago I uploaded my reaction to uh, episodes four to six for season 11 that is up on YouTube right now and I got a lot of comments and a lot of feedback from you guys uh, from that batch and some things that I want to clarify some things I want to address directly for some of you and just general things that I want to make sure we're all on the same page on moving forward because I don't want this to be a, a, a taxing experience for me. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want people to feel like they're walking on eggshells in the comment section or anything like that. So I just want to clear the air and I just want to have a little conversation at the beginning before we jump in. Of course, it's me. You know, these intros are long winded. People who are going to skip over this for the reaction probably don't care about the context that I'm giving. But for those of you who are here, for those of you who are interested in what I have to say, I appreciate that as well. So first off, uh, a lot of you guys... <laughs> A lot of you guys are surprised that I've never seen Wally. -E. Like a lot of people, uh, like that's what that that was the main takeaway from the from episode four to six batch was like, what you've never seen Wally? -E? How how have you never seen it? Like I've never gone out of my way to not watch Wally. -E. I've just never been in a situation where I'm like. I'm going to watch this movie. Uh, I don't think I was ever in a situation where I had like the friends or in general, just people to go and see it in theaters when it came out. I actually don't even know when it came out. So I, I assume obviously around the time that this did, since it was like a little, um, uh, since in the last batch or in the batch that I'm referring to episode four to six batch, Griff makes a Wally -E reference. And I'm like, Oh, I've never seen Wally -E, and the freaking internet exploded. But, um, I don't know. I've just never been in a situation uh, where, and that goes with a lot of movies. Like I've never seen Star Wars. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. Uh, my girlfriend and I are watching The Hunger Games for the first time. We watched the first movie a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully this week coming up, we can watch the second one so I can just get through that and see how all that plays out. Uh, in terms of movies, I've just never, I've seen Harry Potter. So I got that going for me, but like Lord of the Rings, I've never seen. Uh, I've never seen, like I said, Lord of the Rings. Um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, I've never seen any of those. The only ones of those that I've seen has been Homecoming. Uh, I've never seen Star Wars, any of them. So, like, I'm just not that much of a movie person in my own element. I, I, my center form of entertainment has always been anime and video games. That's why I never got into, like, comic books or superheroes. That's why the Marvel stuff never really appealed to me, um, until it became, like, center focus, like, pop culture, like, Endgame and, and Infinity War and, Than and Thanos and all that other stuff. So, movies to me have always passed me by. And uh, I'm kind of catching up on that now. Kaylin and I have watched uh, several movies that I've never seen for the first time, especially Disney films. A lot of Disney films I've never seen and Pixar films. I've seen Toy Story, so don't come for me there. But uh, some of you guys have actually given me homework, surprisingly enough. So I am going to, at some point, Hopefully by the end of the Chorus Trilogy watch through, I will sit down and watch Wally. -E. Uh, I asked Kaylin yesterday. She's already seen it, but she's fine with watching it with me since I've never seen it before. And uh, I, I might come back to you guys with a little mini review 
of of Wally and uh, give you my thoughts on the movie because I've never seen it and um, you know hopefully you guys will uh, be quelled in that regard because a lot of people left comments on Wally more than the actual discussion or the reaction itself like that's the main takeaway of episode four to six batch so I thought that was really funny um, but yeah so I'm going to be watching Wally I actually wrote down a few notes here one of them being Wally and uh, yeah so that's the case. Um, I am going to talk about the season 11 teaser in a minute, but um, I need to get a little serious right here because some of you guys probably saw on the paper there, this guy right here that was showcased at the end of season six, someone spoiled who he was for me. Uh, I think his name is Felix. So that's not cool. So that person's banned. They can no longer comment on any of my videos. Well, they can comment. It's just no one will ever see it. They're shadow banned. Um, and anybody who has spoiled anything for me, if you are a moderator and you are watching this and you see a spoiler, I want you to legitimately ban these people. I don't care. Like, that is a spoiler for me. Information that is given to me in the comments where I can't even read my comments because I'm going to get spoiled on something. That is considered a spoiler because you guys have seen the show before I have. Y'all know who this man is. Y'all know what his name is. Y'all know his purpose before I do. So I, I don't appreciate people going out of their way to spoil something for me just because they've seen it. That's the whole point of this conversation. That's the whole point of this relationship when it comes to me watching RVB and you guys enjoying and taking away my reactions and my thoughts and my discussions. So if you are a, if you are a moderator, you have the liberty, if you see a comment, to hide user from comments. Like there is an option there as a moderator that you can shadow ban someone. I want you to do that. Because now I have to walk on eggshells and hope that someone doesn't spoil some big plot reveal twist that happens later this season or season 12 or season 13. And I've been really good with not having spoilers. And I really think it comes down to the fact that I've been gone for so long that people are just out of their loop or they're just out of their element when they come back and they, you know, they're getting RVB videos. And I don't like the excuse of, oh, well, I was just excited. Like, no, like you have to think of the comment, you have to type it out and you have to hit enter knowing that there's a chance because I'm the channel owner that I'm going to read my comments. As I just said, I just read the comments of everyone talking about Wally. And there are people in there saying like, oh, I love Felix. I can't wait for you to meet him. He's such a great dude. And I'm just like, like, can you not? You know, and there are some other comments, too, that my moderators had to delete because they were like, yo, these are actual, like, heavy spoilers. Stay out of the comments for a little bit so I can clean it up. So, yeah, you spoil, you're getting banned. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that doesn't just go for RVB videos. That goes for the, like, as long as my channel exists, your comments will never be seen. So do not do that because that really ticked me off. Another thing that we need to talk about, and I'm sorry that this is very stern and serious, but... I feel like, again, because I've been gone for so long, there are some people who haven't been around. There are some people who are new around these parts who don't know my mannerisms. They don't know how I typically do things, right? I've been watching Red vs. Blue since 2016. Four years that I've covered the last going on 11 seasons and miniseries and soundtracks and season reviews and like batch episode reaction discussions, some of which were longer than the actual seasons. Like some of the batches that I did for season 10 were longer than season that were longer than season 10, right? And I feel like the average person skips the intro, watches the reaction, doesn't stick around for the discussion. And because of that, they go into these reactions with a preconceived notion. Comments like these on screen here need to stop. I don't need people coming into my videos and critiquing my personality. I am not a product that needs to be bettered, bet to, to be tweaked and, and, and manipulated to suit whoever's watching me. This is my first time watching RVB, and I'm not as upset as you guys think I am. I'm just trying to, like, make a statement here. This is my first time watching Red vs. Blue. It's my first reactions. It's my first response to everything that I'm seeing and hearing. I have a right to not get everything in the first try. I have a right to, to not 
pick up on every little thing that's being said, every little joke, every little whatever. I rewatch Red vs. Blue. I guarantee you I rewatch Red vs. Blue as a reactor. I watch this show probably more than most people who have reacted to the series on YouTube. And that's not a flex. That's just me being like incredibly thorough with my notes, with my notebook, with 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 the previous seasons, with the research and the 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 discussions and conversations that I've had with this show. I don't need someone coming into my comments and telling me how to react to a show so that way it mirrors it's a, so that way it becomes a mirrored reflect, reflection of their reaction or their first time watching it. I get the vicarious you know, living vicariously through someone else's experience, but you're not going to find that here. If I want to talk over something, I can talk over it knowing that I'm going to rewatch the show. I'm going to understand that. And in the next batch, I'm going to have the context. I understand that I can pick up on things on the fly as I'm talking because I've been doing this for so long. I can bounce around different things and not really miss a beat when it comes to um, what's being said versus what I'm hearing versus what I'm saying. Like, I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to provide commentary. I'm trying to pick up on things. I'm doing like four different things. I'm juggling a bunch of different things at once here. So... I don't know. It's just a little upsetting to to constantly every so often read comments of people telling me he's not doing this right. He's not doing that. He's missing this information. And I'm just like, yeah, it's easy for you to say because you've seen the season. You've seen the series already. You already know every single thing down to a T. Give me a chance to not be perfect. That's all I ask. Right. And the things that I do miss out on, I guarantee you I'll pick up on it 10 times over when I rewatch it and triple watch it. Granted, this season has been pretty straightforward for the most part. And even the little things that I miss out on, it's not like I'm missing out. It's not like I missed the, the director's green eyes and I didn't put together that Carolina was his daughter or, or something like something serious. It's always like minor shit that really doesn't matter. But I don't know. Like, I, 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 I if you come here for a reflection of yourself in my reactions, I'm sorry, but that's not always going to be the case. I am my own person. You might not watch other videos of other people talking over things but sometimes i do that and you have to accept that like you just have to accept that so comments like this comments like that they they really just need to stop um or i'll just be done with those people altogether as well i don't need critiquing on me as a person and that's what it comes down to this is my personal like i'm not making rvb videos to blow up on youtube like, I, I'm not trying to do that. I don't think that's even fucking possible to blow up on, like, a 17-year-old season uh, series. So, like, this is just a personal thing. Like, this is a show that I've enjoyed watching over the last four years that I will continue watching until it's finished. And I have a long way to go before I'm caught up. And if you're fine with the way that I do things, the way that I've been doing things for the last four years, then I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me be me. But if you're someone who comes in here, skips a bunch of stuff, watches only the reactions and wants me to watch things in the exact catered, tailor-made way that you want it, you need to go somewhere else. That's all I have to say. Um, so with those two things out of the way, uh, the teaser trailer. So I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit turned about when it came to the trailer. And again, these this re, this intro is going to be really long, but it's important to me to say stuff like that. I'm sorry if it comes off as a little like out of nowhere, out of left field or if it kind of like dumbs down the hype or the energy or the excitement for these. I I just really need to get that out there. And I'm not upset. It's not like season 6 where I was like like low key like pissed off that everyone was like down my throat about that batch at the time it's nothing like that i i just really want to nip it in the bud and this is going to be the last point that i want to mention here with the season 11 trailer so there's a season 11 teaser trailer and there's a season 11 trailer apparently the teaser trailer is the important bit of information that i need to figure out and that i need to watch uh it's kind of considered like an episode zero of sorts similar to season six that y'all have been telling me but the reason why i skipped over it is because the title actually reads red versus blue season 11 comedy week teaser featuring smosh rooster teeth so in my head i was like Oh, that's just a comedy bit by by Smosh at the time. And it, it didn't really give me any information. Like, I haven't seen it yet, but it, it didn't seem like it was something that was important to watch. And Georgia had told me 
um, that at this point, it's up to me whether I want to watch the actual trailers because the trailers themselves probably have things in the season that knowing me, I'm going to overthink and I'm going to expect to see those things if they are shown in the trailer before I see them in the actual season. So I'm putting out a statement right now. I will not be watching season 11 trailer, season 12 trailer, season 13 trailer, maybe season 14 because that's an anthology seasons 15 16 17 trailers i will not be watching probably any other trailers unless they are along the same lines of like season six which was actually pertinent to like the meta and omega and outpost 17b and all of the setup for uh season six episode one but i will be checking out this teaser trailer apparently it gives me some context to things that i have been uh questioning and some preconceived notions based on the information in the season that i i guess i was wrong on or whatever so i will be following up on that and and making sure we're all on the same page in terms of the season 11 teaser and uh yeah, it's going to happen halfway through the season, but better late than never. And uh, moving forward, you know, we'll we'll be on the same page with that. So I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys uh, are fine with that. I hope you guys, for the most part, understand like this long-winded intro. There's a lot of different points. The teaser trailer, Wally, Felix, unfortunately being spoiled for me, which is pretty fucked up. And again, free reign to any mods out there. Ban people outright. Don't, don't hide their comment. Don't qualify it as spam. Like, ban these people. And like, obviously I trust all of my mods to do their due diligence and to, uh, you know, obviously use the moderation power, uh, with responsibility, um, because obviously they're trying to preserve my first time experience and I don't want to not read my comment section, you know, and then obviously shitty comments or comments in general that are very overly aggressive with my experience, just stop. To stop that's it uh other than that we're gonna jump into this next batch i'm gonna check out the teaser trailer first and then we'll jump into episodes uh 10 to 12 so i hope you guys look forward to it so before we jump into the reaction a huge thank you goes out to all of my backers over on patreon uh for your support of my content in the channel overall throughout the year of 2020 and especially during my return to form with content uh for red versus blue with the chorus trilogy and an extra special thank you goes out to those of you in the silver eyed warrior as well as the women wizards of remnant tier uh, for your kindness generosity and support and that goes to daniel burns ezra lee go to kai ian dodd jamie coleman matthew trap michael and winter schnee thank you guys all so much for your continued support of these videos uh content for enabling and allowing these videos to exist uh and for giving me the best opportunity to make the best content that i can uh, on a consistent basis so thank you guys so much and i hope you all enjoy the reaction all right guys so i'm on my browser right now we're gonna check out the red versus blue season 11 comedy week teaser featuring smosh now again at first glance i remember seeing this when i was initially like deciding if i wanted to watch the trailers if i I didn't want to and i just like I, I i guess i glossed over it because from the thumbnail it just looks like it's smosh like commentating over season 11 i didn't think there'd be any like important information so i'm gonna find out what's in this and uh, we'll move on to the next batch so give me one second let me thumbs up you real quick all right i don't know how the audio is gonna sound sorry three two one now rooster teeth Holy shit, 10 year anniversary. Wow. That's crazy. It's already 17 year anniversary. Hey, Dennis. Were we supposed to uh, be doing something at like four? Well, yeah, dude. Didn't okay, you hear so about those guys? They're voicing guys? characters. I don't know, those Sim Trooper guys. Reds and Blues. Okay. They were like these criminals that helped track down that evil dude with the secret organization. Season 10, okay. Project Freelancer. they robots and evil AIs and bounty hunters, and there was that one big guy that was like, Whoa! and they threw him off a cliff, and one of them died oh, the a meta. bunch, and another guy that was bad, then good, and oh, there were, there were ghosts, but uh, oh, after all boy. that, they were like, AI and stuff. Just get to the point, so... Let's see. They were going to be transported back home. Dennis? Jerry, uh, the ship? I love you. Okay. What? You are my friend. I know. I enjoy our tete tetes Our what a what? <laughs> but if you do not tell me what the hell this has to do with us in the next five seconds, I'm gonna shoot I you. am going to shoot you. <laughs> hey, I was getting there. They okay. were going to be transported back home on a big ass ship, and it was supposed to stop by for refueling today. Okay? But their ship crashed. So then, uh... Okay. 
So I guess that are they? I guess that explains it. Oh, not my fault. Absolutely your fault. Of course, it's Caboose's fault. <laughs> well, looks like we're gonna be here a while. Better build some bases. Griff Simmons, let's get to work. Yes, sir. Oh, work. I hate work. I love the, the worst. I think I'm the going guitar. to this. God, that's so nostalgic. So. I wouldn't call that an episode zero. Let, let's be honest. That was literally a minute of exposition between two characters. This introduction makes sense because they didn't explain at all. So first off, the reason what I'm curious about is why the hell didn't they just explain it better in the season? If you're gonna, if you're committing to the end of season ten being a oh they found their new home and then you you realize between season ten and season eleven that no we're gonna change that. I don't know they 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 probably should have done it in the first that because this doesn't even seem. I don't know, man. This just seems off. Like this doesn't feel like an episode one like season six did. I'm sorry, an episode zero like season six did. This literally just feels like a, hey, we have nowhere to put this retcon in the plot, so we're just going to make a two-minute video explaining it to you. So, essentially, after all this stuff, they... So what, did they get pardoned from the UNSC? So they're not wanted criminals? So they're not wanted criminals, and they were getting a ship to go back home? But weren't they already on their planet? Like, why get on... I, I don't know. Anyways, I guess this kind of makes sense. Um, to how they got stranded, what the whole ship's, you know, plot line of the ship is for, uh, and why they're, like, shipwrecked on this new planet. Um, I, I, I'm just a little confused as to, like, where were they then if they needed to get a ride back home? Unless they were just trying, unless they decided, hey, we're gonna leave this planet, but that's just, that's also a little odd. Um, unless it's on the other side of the planet and they were going to get a ship and go, I don't know. Anyways, this is a little confusing to me. Not going to lie. Seems like the retcon kind of screwed things up a bit. And that does act as a bit of a blemish for season, for season 11. Not going to lie because it's like, they should have just done a better job at explaining it. And I guess Washington did his best, but at the same time, it's like, they didn't explain that the UN, like the whole UNSC thing and the ship. Like, them being on a new planet. Like, they didn't even explain that they're on a new planet. Not even the fact that, like, hey, we hit a freaking detour and we crash landed here. But, like, the fact, like, there are other, like, habitable planets that they're just going off to. So, like, what was the planet that they were on before? Was that Earth? I don't know. It, it's just a little confusing. Other than that, um, I guess this does make a little bit more sense to me. Uh, I guess now I won't be mentioning the reds and blues being wanted criminals of the unsc because i'm pretty sure that was probably triggering for some people um and at the very least now i can understand that they are on a new planet and the ship crashed from which would explain that one scene with tucker talking to the pilot and now they have to try to reach out and get a signal for help and uh you know that's where the end of season six happens uh, that one guy, now I know his name, Felix, picked up the signal and is on their way, probably is scoping them out with the sniper in that one section from the last batch. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So hopefully this quells all of y'all out there who wanted me to check this out. It kind of muddies the water a little bit in terms of the retcon because it's not it's not the cleanest it could have been, I'll be honest. Uh, even if I saw this from the beginning, I would probably have, like, I have the same exact questions. I'm like, why did they feel the need to leave the planet? So other than that, uh, we're going to jump over to the season 10 to 12 batch. So I hope you like it. Okay, so we are officially starting Red vs. Blue season 11 with my episode 10 to 12 batch. I do apologize for the most part for the long-winded intro and obviously the little ramble that I had there with the um, with the season 11 uh, teaser trailer. Uh, the, another thing that kind of caught my eye with that trailer, because I just rewatched it before switching over, is like... That teaser doesn't explain anything of how Epsilon and Carolina aren't with them if if the end of season 10 is retconned. Like I I I like I, I don't I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Like that kind of like muddies the waters of a lot of things, like how season 10 ended, how season eleven started, and even if you contextualize that before season eleven, 
I don't know. It's just a lot of, it's just, it's just icky. So I, I do feel like that is a bit of a blemish, unfortunately, on how the season starts because they had one idea and then they shifted mid before the next season to a different idea. And it just kind of like set thing, sex, sets things off a little differently, especially because I didn't have context of that. So even if you didn't watch trailers and you went from one season to the next, you'd be incredibly confused. So I just wish that they probably just put like the last 10 seconds of that at the end of season 10 or even at the beginning of like put it some way in the season to make it make sense. So trailers aren't necessary or or completely necessary to understand the plot of what's going on. Um, I think it's a little different because like Ruby, for example, I'm caught up. So I watch everything that comes out regarding Ruby RVB. Like it's a different story. If you're catching up to a series, you don't need to really watch the trailers. You just watch the source material. Um, but with all of that said, anyways, uh, I feel like my rambles are getting ahead of me. Um, we're going to be starting this. So I hope you guys look forward to it. And we're going to be starting this in three, two, one now. As long as oh. I'm leader of this team, I will do everything in my power to ensure your safety, whether you like it Oh, so this not. is right before Thing jumps us. in on them, know. on That's the Puma. Hey, that means we get to hear the way. music again. Attack, no one is going to attack! 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 <laughs> You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Red vs. Blue, Season 11, Episode 10. You right. have literally the worst timing. <laughs> Actually, it's the We're opposite. No longer fraternizing with the enemy. Then Mint. Now, see, when he says we, imagine he's only <laughs> referring to himself. Do not group us together. Yeah, he had nothing Mint's to do with this. Aqua, I think. What the hell are you two doing? Uh, again, not two. Just, Just him. <laughs> can't stress this enough. Yeah. You made me believe that reds and blues could coexist. That we could work together as one people. That we could all get together. Bruh, you, you... Went against we that. Can. We are seriously. What the fuck is this about? <laughs> you kidnapped one of my men. God damn it, Simmons. He, he wasn't kidnapped, dipshit. He came over here by himself. We can't get him. Dipshit. <laughs> is this true, Simmons? Uh oh. It's not your fault, sir. It's Griff's. What did I do? You're fucking disgusting, Griff. Well, yeah, but I'm I mean, been like hello. That. Sarge was the one that decided to take half the base for himself. Oh. True. Then I guess it is your fault, sir. That makes Yikes! You a the enemy! What? Damn! Uh, no reason for panic. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's not let Freckles kill ready. everyone. You were kidnapped. You deliberately joined the enemy. But if he wasn't kidnapped, that would mean we were never the enemy in the first place. Hey! So, try and confuse me with your words. Sherbrooke. Reds and blues are the same. Aqua. Tucker, Aqua. Me? These guys roll up in a fucking assault jeep, and you choose to yell at me? Look. Are hot. Hell yeah. In Washington, I'm tired of you bossing us around. Now is not the time. You know, I disagree. We were having a talk when Tweedledee and Tweedle fucking idiot decided to interrupt. <laughs> so let's finish this. There is nothing. Come to on, finish. chill. Sort of Y'all are on right the now. same you team in your. First thing to happen to this team since Blue Boy over there decided to show up. I'm a man. Blue man. You take that back. Wash is a great leader. I assume. Blast for me. Stop. <laughs> Seriously. I would rather follow Caboose into battle than you. Oh, really? Then let's just make him the leader. See how much better off you are. <laughs> well, I humbly accept your domination. Accept Please the don't. Shut up. Do not talk to him. <laughs> I are having an argument. I will be talking back to him. That's how arguments work, you fucking toaster. Washington is not the commanding officer. Oh! What? What? Oh! A unanimous decision by the blue team. Caboose has been promoted to blue. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> you gonna talk back to Freckles? Well, yeah. This is gonna be a lot of fun. No, oh my Caboose, god. Look, Freckles, this is a misunderstanding. Caboose is team leader? Jesus oh, Christ. God, yeah, sorry, he's kidding. going back. Oh Nothing. my okay. god. <laughs> Commanding <laughs> officer. Your post will designate you as a wall. This designation is punishable by death. <laughs> <laughs> Freckles is popping off, dude. Now the blues have kidnapped Simmons. Yeah. Wait! Firing no. main cannon! Oh. Oh. Whoa! Oh. 
Sarge! Yo, Sarge! Bad! Bad! Down! Primary space eliminated. Walfway SA explosion. Get out of here! Get out of here, Lopez! No, Simmons. I'm afraid I won't be okay until I exact my revenge! Seriously, oh I my god. Poor Griff, he, he just... <laughs> Dude, you... Now, Sarge, Freckles no. is gonna kill everybody. Um? Oh, is it the new guy? Whoa! Man, you guys oh, no! I'm so happy. Don't Wait. They're all here. Donut told me you guys needed help. So I got the best help money could buy. <laughs> and I didn't tip the pilot. That's frugality. What pilot? Wow. The pilot that dropped us off, dummy. Dropped, dropped you, you off? off? As in, you now you're you stranded anymore? with them. Exactly. Oh, now, you idiots. So you're telling me that you heard our distress signal. Fuck. Grab Doc. Fuck. Hopped on a ship. Fuck. And then told the ship to leave. <laughs> and that's your idea of sending help? What? No. I brought Lopez too. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, Old go. Lopez. <laughs> Kill him. Kill oh him. my god. You've <laughs> got to be kidding. <laughs> Did I hear a gunshot? So someone else was on the sniper. Unfortunate. <gasps> Whoa! Dude, unfortunate? Who are you, Crow? Kill him! Kill him! This man has camo and a sniper and a dope ass voice! I'm Aqua! <laughs> I'm Aqua. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Look at this guy! Who is this? Oh, well, so I, I just know his name. So his this is Felix. Who the fuck is Felix? This guy looks badass. So he was, so in the last batch, I was like, oh, I thought at first I saw someone's sniper crosshairs and I was like, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's Sarge. But then Sarge came in on the Warthog. So I was like, wait, then is that the, the other guy? And lo and behold, it's the other guy. And he's like, unfortunate. And I remember Crow in Ruby, uh, volume four in the one episode, he was like, he's like coughing up poison from Tyrion. And he's like, that's unfortunate. And then the episode cuts to black. So I wonder if that's a reference. That's no. kind of funny. I brought Lopez, Oh too. my God. I should have known better okay, than to expect up. Donut to actually save the day. Kill him! <laughs> <laughs> I heard a gunshot too. Imagine Washington I shot him again. Up. Wow, this guy looks so badass. Unfortunate. And he's got camouflage. Wow, so he's scoping them out. Literally. Oh my god, I'm so excited for new characters. So he's just chilling, just this looking out. This is Rock Bottom. Unfortunate. You ever hit Rock Bottom before, Wash? Well, I just realized something. So he's not shipwrecked. So where the hell did he come from? You know, like he, he was like in a swamp area, but like, is he from this planet? He must be from this planet then. Which then means there is a way out of here, but he's like on the cliff. So he's not like stuck in the canyon with them. Um, I wonder if he's going to help them get out then. Maybe. Who knows? He's he's right right now. He's just like, what a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> Can't get any lower. Damn. I want to go home. Okay, well, maybe I spoke too soon. Attention. <laughs> what a dictator. Yes. Hello, thank you, yes. Hello. Freckles is thank so OP yes. mega thank hacks right now. <clears throat> it's not even fit. Caboose has all the power now. Hello. Captain, all team members are accounted for. Well, excellent. News. Thank you. Captain Freckles. Oh my lord. Oh my Hi. god, they gave him a rank too? It looks too? like we have a new member today. Yes, get Simmons a big blue team. Hello. Yes, <laughs> welcome to blue team, Simmons. 
Yeah, change your cost. Yeah, change you change your outfit. Everyone board today for the brew team. Awaiting mission briefing. Oh, yes, right. Alright. Um, hey, okay. the, the um, team leader is losing his marbles. Good. Doesn't Look have all of it in there after that shootout. Yeah. Yeah, not easy being a leader, eh, Caboose? Watch. <laughs> Watch. Watch, what do I do? <laughs> Oh my yes. god. Yes, yes, Just yes, make yes. him the leader, yes, people. Well, we know the communications tower works, so <clears> we should <throat> continue in our efforts to make contact. Yeah. Ah, yes. Very good. Excellent. Yes. I mean, technically, you However, did. However, we should also work on trying to boost the signal of the radio transmitter. Oh. We were barely able to maintain a steady line of communication last time. Put Lopez's head and up if there. If we make contact again, there's no guarantee anyone would be able to understand us. Ah. Damn, man. Go fix the radio, I wonder where Doc's gonna be chilling what, what? since he's the middleman. Donut's obviously gonna go back right, to Red Team. We're for another job. Unless they actually Good killed them. And helping you. Lookout. Lookout. Yes. Washington. Make sure you look out <laughs> for bad guys. Oh my god, you're on guard Anything? duty, my guy. That looks scary. There's a giant robot trying to kill me. Yeah, why can't Freckles be your lookout? Yeah. Stuff is like his entire reason for existing. Hell yeah. Well, um, Freckles has to watch you. Needs a great best friend. And Freckles, I think you could be that best friend. Acknowledged. No. Uh, do I need to do anything? <clears throat> oh my god, I'm red! Oh my- Oh, no, sorry. sorry I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> God, man, caboose yes, on yes, freaking yes, God, yes, leadership. Yes. Um, Never thought I'd see the day. You do what you uh, normally do for the Reds, but instead for the Blues. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, Wait, what is your job for the Reds? He just like what does all the work. I just did it. Okay, everybody. And Break. <laughs> Blue right, team on three. Bye. <laughs> I hope you're happy. Yeah. Hey, don't pin this shit on me. Hey, you're both to blame. I'll just stay, stay here. here <laughs> Commanding officer not right. doing his job. All messed up. I can't feel my toes. Is that normal? Um, mm. let's go with yes. Works for me. You oh know, the boy. next time someone comes to help you, I wouldn't really recommend beating the crap out of them. Well, the next True. time somebody comes to help us, I hope they actually bring us help. Hey, I didn't True. think to that. Dog, yeah, I'm so happy. So what the heck happened? Wow. After you guys dropped me off in Valhalla, you guys were supposed to be going back to Blood Gulch. Yeah. Well, funny story. Oh my god, oh. who spilled soda all over my instrument? <laughs> oh my god, I spilled my soda? <laughs> oh <laughs> my, it was his crashed. fault! But uh, no one seems to know why or how or when or They blamed- I didn't do it, you can't prove that I did. It's time They blamed Caboose. Oh, uh, we're not gonna do anything violent, are we? Remember, I'm a pacifist. Yeah, but think about it. You can't spell pacifist without fist, which you need to throw a punch. That <laughs> always leads to fighting, the precursor to a full-out battle. There you go. And ultimately, the first step Actual the 200 IQ war. Sarge right here. Violence is unavoidable, Doc. Time to just admit you've got a natural-born pacifist monster murderer. <laughs> Why do I even bother? Yeah, oh, true. come on, Doc. Where's your sense of adventure? We're a bunch of strapping young men stranded in the wilderness. I don't think that's the lightish red time. he's wearing. Just saying. Does. I'm starting to remember why. That's I like, like a you. pale it's pink. Just like camping. Who wants to help me pitch a tent? Yep, there it is. Yeah, I was waiting <laughs> for it, dude. <laughs> We've let Washington make all the decisions. Oh my and god. Just look where that's gotten us. The war dog is destroyed. We're running low on food. And Simmons is being held prisoner. Now the war hog is destroyed. Now they're fucked. Our own hands. Red hands. The days and the blues have a tank. While the blues do interesting and convoluted things are over. Right. Thank you! Oh my god, yo, he just took a shot at the fact that the blues are forwarding the plot while the reds just do nonsense. I, I love, I love that, <laughs> I love that self-awareness. Sound like a good time? Hold on. I don't know what does. I'm starting to remember why I don't like you. It's just like camping. Who wants to help me pitch a tent? Yep, there it is. There it is. It's landing in this godforsaken hellhole. We've let Washington make all the decisions. And just look where that's gotten us. <laughs> the war dog is destroyed. We're running low on food, and Simmons is being held prisoner. Shit's pretty fucked. It's 
Yeah. Now we took matters into True. our own hands. Red hands. Red handed. <laughs> Yeah. All right. It's our time to shine. The first, yeah. <laughs> after Hello, 10 seasons, Austin. the Reds are going to do I'm something. Propose to you gentlemen, is in no way simple, smart, or seemingly possible. Solid pep talk so far, Sarge. Yeah. There's one thing in this canyon that's been the source of all our problems. And if we want to get out of here alive, Freckles? we're going to have to eliminate it. Freckles, no. Boys, we've got to kill Freckles. No! That's Caboose's uh, friend. Yes, that is. We just got here. <laughs> you mean Lopez? No. Oh my Pretty God. Okay. I think that. <laughs> Dude, Lopez and Lopez Dos Point No. Wow. Giant robot that belongs to Caboose, aka the thing you that will can't fucking do kill that. us anywhere near it. So exactly how do you plan you on need the tank at least? Charge? Well, if our ship was carrying something as big as Freckles. I figure it may have also been carrying something big enough to break him. We're going aboard the ship. Wait, the ship? We're tonight. Donut, you guard the base while we're gone. Wait, Washington's uh, hiding something hey. in there, I think. You guys haven't seen anything suspicious around. Oh, come on, uh, dude. Suspicious? Don't be. Uh, whatever do you mean, Agent Washington? <sighs> Nothing, just. He has a feeling? Doing my job. Nice <clears thing, throat> Lord. I just There's realized, too. I, I honestly think what Washington's going through is like some kind of uh, like it, it's like a form of like PTSD like like obviously post Project Freelancer stuff like his mind is just so used to that lifestyle that like this is the furthest thing removed from any of that ever since he met the Reds and Blues like now it's even worse because now he 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 always needs to take charge he always needs to be trying to do something. And, um, <clears throat> like, even now he just came and he's like, yeah, you guys didn't see anything suspicious. It's like, like, you wouldn't say that unless there is a cause for, sus like, there's, unless there's, like, suspicious activity going around. But he's already, like, led to assume, like, you just gotta, th that's just th the way I'm wired now. I just have to always be expecting something to happen. So, um, I, I actually like that, at the very least, we're getting a different side of Washington's mentality. Because I, I... Obviously, it wasn't ever, like, addressed in this way because of the fact that there's always there was always something. There was always an AI. There was always a freelancer. There was always the director. There was always something keeping him going. But now that, like, his engine is out in terms of, like, his entire life up until this point with Project Freelancer, I think now he's almost having, like, a, not an identity crisis, but he's he's going through, like, a sort of crisis where... He doesn't really know what to do now because he he doesn't have to be that gung ho anymore. <laughs> Acting. <clears throat> so wait, so they're going on the. Whoa, they're going. Whoa, whoa, where's this? Hello, who is that? Who is that in the back? Where is this? This is on the same planet. It's like the same similar tower structure. Hey, can I get some fuel on three? You got it. Thanks. Whoa. New characters! Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm not really from around here, but uh do you know about that crashed spaceship? <gasps> spaceship. Red versus yeah, blue? I just dropped off a couple of guys and saw it in the middle oh, of the Oh, it's the guy! It's big. Like Oh, really you're big. about to give the information. No, I can't say I've heard of it. Really? Oh man. I mean someone should report that, right? Well, <laughs> that's up to you. Who is he talking to? Yeah, it was pretty bad. You got a phone I could use? Hold sure. on, hold on, hold on, hold right on. Right behind you. Let me redo that. In the middle of a canyon. It's big. Like, really big. No, I can't say I've heard of it. Really? Oh, man. I mean, someone should report that, right? Well, that's up to you. Yeah, it was pretty bad. You got a phone I could use? Hmm. Sure. Right behind you. Thanks. Oh! What the fuck? Oh, this guy again! Just so you're aware, no one's gonna find your ship either. Who is it? Bruh! Okay, so this is not a good guy? Control, this is Locus. Locus? Complete. Wait! What the fuck? People said Felix! Hold on. Wait, who Who the fuck? Hold on. Locus? That's a badass name! Wait, is his name like... 
Felix Locus or Locus Felix. Or, I don't know. Is that his code name? Maybe his real name's Felix. I don't know. Anyways, command. Hold on. Who's he? Who's he talking to? Control. This is Locus. <laughs> Objective complete. Objective. Returning to crash site. Bravo. Crash site. Bravo. So. Returning to crash site, bro. Oh, so what happened was he was scoping out the reds and blues. The airship comes in, drops off Doc and Lopez, uh, Doc Lopez and, and Donut, heads back to this point here. So he left that location, chased this guy down, killed him so he doesn't leave or tell any, but like, why? He's like, no one will find your ship either. So it's like, and whose command is it like, like, com like UNSC command? Like, what the hell? And now, okay, returning to site, crash site, Bravo. So I guess that's the location that the Reds and Blues are at. Crash site, Bravo. Locus. What the fuck? Is this guy like a freaking a mercenary or something? He's just like mission complete. So I'm, I don't know. Anyways, that's interesting. That's very exciting. I love his voice. All right, here we go. This is, I think this is the last episode of The Batch. Oh my God, some new shit's actually happening. So they're going uh, into the ship too. Close. I don't know the first thing about fixing intergalactic space radios. Uh-huh. Every movie I've ever seen with a repairman in it always glosses over the actual repairing part. Just, <laughs> hey lady, hey. I'm here to lay some pipe. And then bam, two scoops of raisins. Uh -huh. <laughs> Damn it, woman, if you let the man do his job, then maybe we wouldn't be Okay. Hey, Tucker, what the fuck is this thing? It's a gravity lift. You step in it and it takes you upstairs. Well, I know that, but what the fuck is it doing here? It's glowing <clears throat> and going. <laughs> so let me get this straight. We're survivors of a shipwreck, living off of the bare necessities, and then in the middle of the room is this incredible feat of modern day technology. Yeah. I don't know. Wash found it on the ship, and so we put it in the base. What's so weird oh. about that? Oh. It's like finding a car made out of rocks, plastic, and a Bluetooth radio. <laughs> oh, we got that too. Siri. Oh. Play Siri. Song, dance team. What? Did you mean Bomb Andy? Ah, oh, piece of shit. Calling Bomb Andy. How are you able to power all of this? Oh We're boy. The ship. You mean you have a direct line to a limitless power supply? Well, no. Wash, what are you I'm doing? I think Wash is doing kind of all of this. So who cares? Take as much as you want. God bless the American way. What are you gonna <clears throat> do? Just a side project. Oh. Okay. Hey, Don't fuck with anything. I've secured the perimeter. No bad guys to be found. Excellent work, Commander Washington. <clears throat> Crash site Bravo. Why? Maybe someday you could be the leader of your team. <laughs> yes, maybe someday. Now, someday. I have a very important question for you, Washington. It'll be condescending. Okay. Um, do you think Freckles would look silly in a hat? Oh my Possibly God! A sombrero. You want to dress your oh boy. <clears throat> you know, I just remembered I haven't checked for any bad guys on the ship. What? Oh, you're about you to. Simmons is on the ship. I mean, he's not. He's technically blue now. Sorry, boss. I'll take care of it right away. Oh boy. Yeah, some people are just not cut out for military life, Freckles. Oh please. Let's go make you that tiny hat. Thanks, Wash. Freckles is like, what the fuck? Hey, you've reached the voicemail of Andy the Bomb. Wow, Andy! Wow, who's this? It's actually them. Wait, what? Thanks, Wash. Another really character! Is that Felix? Hey, you've reached the voicemail of Andy the Bomb. Siri, hang up! Holy shit. It's actually them. Oh! Oh! Oh no. They... They don't... Wait, they don't know each other? Are they both there? Who the fuck are these guys? What's on the ship? Oh no, my god. Place, so there's nice. two guys in this base, the and they both yeah. recognize the reds and blues. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Hold on. Are these Did new just... voice actors, by the way? I don't know who's voicing these characters. Thanks, really looking out for your team. Hey, you Andy the, the Bomb! <laughs> what a callback. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's actually them. Holy shit, it's actually them. So I wonder if they're well known by the UNSC because they got pardoned after helping take down Project Freelancer and maybe this is where the guys know them from. 
Because, like, the Reds and Blues have to have, like, an, a name for themselves now, especially, like, Washington being a former freelancer. But then he looks and sees the other guy, Locus. See? Oh, no. And he says, oh, no. So, are these guys rivals? We're gonna get, like, a Locus versus Felix thing? I assume that guy's Felix, then. I guess someone fucked up the name, so I got spoiled on a name that I didn't even know. Place, actually, it looks pretty nice. You don't spoil! Hat. Why, is it bad? We don't know. It landed somewhere else. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Hey, did you guys ever watch Lost? Shut no. up! <laughs> I've never watched Lost either, don't come for me. Alright, man. Fan out and see what you can find. Whoa! Remember, we're hunting the most dangerous prey of them all! Man? Freckles is- No! A giant robot! Kinda. Oh, yeah. Freckles is man. outside! Everything kills man. Man's way down on the list! <laughs> right between koala and retarded koala! Yeah, okay. Oh boy. Well, this was back in a time, huh. so let's just gloss over that. Whoa! What gun is that? What the fuck? Whoa! What the hell? Is that huh. a grenade? Hmm. Uh oh. Ow! Oh! Headshot! <laughs> what the heck, man? What Ow, is that? What is this? Beats me. You wanna try? There's a whole bunch of- I haven't played Halo 4, so I like I have no idea what weapon that is. Come on. They don't do anything. Is that like a a second switch explosive? Yep, that's gonna blow up. Okay. Hey! This ain't a tea party, Nump Skulls. Get rid of those toys and get back to work. Oh boy. Oh man. And take that stupid thing off your head. Okay. I never get to do anything cool. What is that? Better not be breaking things down there! Yeah. They're touching a bunch of shit. According to the ship's records, it was carrying a lot of standard issue weaponry, but it also has a bunch of stuff listed as experimental. Ooh, uh oh. That's military slang for really fucking dangerous. That's not that's good. Uh, looks There's like no AIs on this the ship, ship, are there? No. But there is one prototype that was kept here. Oh? The fuck are these? Looks like some kind of weird grenade. Or it could be a Rubik's Cube. I don't oh. Know. Huh. Interesting. What are you doing? Trying it out. Oh, what the fuck? Whoa. Whoa that disappeared. What the hell? Hold on a second. Killed us. Did you Looks like some kind of weird grenade. Did those could items just like cube. teleport or huh. like blow up? Ah, what are you doing? Trying it out. Oh, Whoa. it like took you it out of there. What us. the fuck? Did you see that? You can't just go around messing with experimental. Stop doing that! <laughs> oh, Dude, that's what cool. Is wrong with you? These things are like teleporter cubes. Yeah. Uh, be careful. We that's don't know sick. how they work. What do you mean? Throw it at a thing, thing disappears. Throw, Throw it, it again, one, it comes back. I can yeah. keep an entire buffet in the park. But where does it go in the really? time being? That's what you're excited about? Man, upstairs. Now! <laughs> Coming! Oh, I am taking these. Oh, boy. Uh, so, Griff got a new weapon. Guess what we found. Son, you could have found a laser guided napalm shark. I still wouldn't care. <laughs> what? Why? What do you, you see? Know that feeling you get when you see a pretty girl on the first day of school? You're not quite sure what to do, but your instincts just take <laughs> over and you smile at her. <laughs> and she smiles back. And suddenly the world is oh, a brand boy. new place. And your stomach <laughs> is all full of twists and twirls. Um, what are you looking at? Yeah? Well, boys. I'm feeling I got that. Feeling right now. Uh oh. Holy shit. Except imagine that pretty girl at school is armor plated. Oh my fucking god. Freckles three point like Freckles days. OP. Sounds pretty high maintenance. She sounds like I need a safe word to date her. Oh yeah. <laughs> so how will we get it out of the ship? What the uh, fuck? No, Freckles is gonna get on? wrecked. No. A girl this fine's gotta be treated What right. is this one? Up and whatnot. We'll take her apart and move her ourselves, limb by limb, packed away in carrying cases if necessary. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna take your forever. Your metaphor kind of took a turn into serial killer territory there. <laughs> Seriously, I just found these awesome future cubes. It's destiny. Oh wow, that? that's right. Oh, Wash, what are you doing? Agent Washington, what the hell is he doing here? Doesn't matter. Use the cube, teleport it, lady. and then throw another one, and it's at your base. There. That's so I'm smart. Good if shit, Griff. Stop referring to the robot as a woman. It's really weird. Not as weird as the throb and erection she's given me. Jeez, oh my Christ. God. <laughs> Washington, what are you doing, dude? Hmm. Need to get.
Conductor. Conductor? Ugh, stupid thing just open. There we go. <sighs> Never thought it would come down to this. What? Are Sorry, Caboose. I don't understand. Sorry, Caboose. Are you trying to kill Freckles too? Sorry, Caboose. Why would you be sorry to Caboose unless you're going to do something like kill his best friend or something? Oh, boy, man. Wow, what a what an episode. What an actual what an actual batch of episodes, dude. Holy shit. So we got new characters, Locus and this new guy, which I'm assuming that's the Felix person that they that I guess the person said was the other guy in the last batch, which is whatever. Um, yeah, so more red and blue shenanigans. They get to a fever pitch moment. Like at this point right here, I'm just surprised people just weren't shooting each other left, right, and center from the jump. But uh, Donut and <laughs> fucking Doc show up. And Lo the head of old Lopez who's still functioning, which is like this is legitimately blood gulch chronicles now like literally every single person is here um obviously with the exception of text for obvious reasons but like everyone is back and i've been hammering about where these two have been for like the last three batches and i'm so happy that they're at the very least in the picture now so unfortunately you know doc and donut they have to save the day and uh they still manage to fuck it up uh you have this new guy Locus, oh, dude, his voice will sound so cool. I wonder if we're gonna get to see, cause like, what was really cool about the freelancers was like, uh, you got to see like under their helmets. So like, obviously Washington is kind of like considered like the main cast now. So I guess Carolina is the only main cast character who we've seen their face reveal. Like we've seen North, South. Uh, I uh, we we saw like the back of Maine's head. Um. So we've seen York. Uh, we've seen a bunch of the previous freelancers. I don't know if these guys are freelancers or if they're mercs or if they're just like just random like soldiers, but they seem to be unified. This guy has like reports to command, mission accomplished, heading back to the base section. And then this other guy is uh, recognizes the reds and blues. So these guys are, I don't know if they're part of different factions. I wonder if they're both part of like, like, is this their home world? Is this their planet? I, I just don't know. Also, I don't know, like, what command Locus was was answering to. Was it UNSC? Is 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 Karan Industries? Is this their planet? You know what I mean? That would be a really interesting twist. Um, You know, and the only reason why I say that is because, like, Karan Chorus, like, the alliteration. But then again, Karan Industries was, was in the Bjorndal Cryogenics Research Facility, which was where Project Freelancer was doing all their shit on the original home planet. I, I don't know if it was Earth. I don't know if Earth is what is where RVB takes place for the first 10 seasons. I doubt it. But uh, but yeah, but it's just weird now that I have to like associate multiple planets with this series because like everything was just universal. And now I'm just like, what? There are other habitable like inhabitable planets out there. So that's a little I know it's Halo and all that, but the last 10 seasons, that was never a concept, at least not in my mind. So, uh, yeah, uh, fucking, I never thought I'd see the day. Never thought I'd see the day where Caboose is an actual team leader through, like, in, in, a, in normal circumstances, it would have clearly been a misunderstanding. It would have been like, okay, clearly we're messing around. But no one can say no to Freckles. Like, Freckles is like the powerhouse of everything. Like, he'll level both teams in an instant. And he's just like, don't talk back to your commanding officer. Y'all just had a negotiation. Obviously, majority vote. Caboose is now the leader. Who's going to say it? Who's going to say something else? I dare you. So, yeah, like, I guess it kind of makes sense for the Reds to want to, like, take down Freckles. Because he's, like, he's clearly swinging the, the pendulum in the Blues' favor, like, unanimously. Um, and if he were to go rogue, that would be even worse. Because it's like, no one can stop. Like, they have a tank. That's the only thing that I can think that could stop it. But now the Reds, the, the Reds just found, like, this freaking Giga Freckles in the, in the ship. 
So I don't know how that's going to work. If that's going to even, are they even going to be able to animate that? That's going to be really interesting to see um, how that plays out. But these guys just come down to the conclusion, we got to kill Freckles, which is probably the worst thing you could do to Caboose, which is why I think Washington to a degree is, um, I think to a degree Washington might be thinking the same thing because he even said, I'm sorry, Caboose. And I'm just like, what's the worst thing you can do to Caboose that you would say sorry for other than killing his best friend or his new best friend or his pet or whatever. But he seems to be creating or constructing something. So I don't know if it's like a divide, like an EMP, like an EMP. You know what I mean? Because technically Freckles is an AI um, and he he would know a lot about EMPs because that's how he took out the, uh, you know, the meta and all the other AI and fragments, you know, in the alpha and stuff like that in season six. So maybe he's trying to create his own like remote EMP because doesn't he have the EMP? He has the EMP like uh, he has the EMP uh, armor ability. No, unless they had to give away all their armor equipment along with their AI after Project Freelancer. Um, but he faked his death. So uh, maybe he still has that. So I don't know if he's trying to, con I, I don't think he's trying to create like an AI in that spot, but I'm thinking maybe just an EMP to take out Freckles as AI um, for that reason. I don't know. And I guess the EMP would make sense with Washington creating it because he used to have an, an EMP armor ability. So I think that would be kind of interesting. Uh, these two Lopez's like OG Lopez is back. I'm actually really surprised by that. They, they, these are like, the juxtaposition these are like two sides of the same character like one cynical uh like robotic like just fucking hates the team he's on the other one is more reasonable and 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 willing to help and doesn't have the same cynical personality as his original and i, I wonder if they're just gonna create like lopez 3.0 that'd be fucking cool or you just take the old lopez helmet and put it over yours and it's just like you guys become one with one another and you guys just like freaking evolve and become lopez trez point oh instead of dose point oh but um but yeah this entire sequence this entire part right here was very intriguing. It took a while for me to put it together. So this is the guy who dropped off Donut and Doc just now in the last sequence. And then he's like, oh yeah, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there's a giant crater, there's a giant canyon. Uh, I just dropped these guys off and I guess Locus followed him here. So I guess no one in, no one out, so to speak. And obviously this guy knows about the crash ship. He's like, shouldn't we tell someone about that? He's like, yeah, hey, it's up to you. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go and make a phone call and, and call it in. And then he just shoots him in the back. So clearly there's something going on here that they don't want anyone else to know about. I don't know if I'm right in saying that, but like, so like there's the UNSC. So there were, so initially it was the UNSC Karan Industries and Project Freelancer. Project Freelancer is now out of the equation. The UNSC pardoned the Reds and Blues, gave them that ship to, to get them to their home or get them back home, and it crashes. So that all of that shit is part of the UNSC. So if Karan Industries also has beef with the UNSC and Karan Industries is housed here, you know what I mean? Because Connie and Pillman and all of them I guess they were insurrectionists. I don't think they were Karin Industries. So maybe maybe I'm overthinking that. Um, I'm just thinking if Karin Industries is a is a is a if Karin Industries is also an enemy or an adversary of the UNSC, clearly they wouldn't want the UNSC catching wind of the situation and having them on their planet for whatever purposes or for whatever reason. Or maybe these guys are just like wanted criminals or something like that i i don't know i'm spitballing right now clearly i don't want you guys to tell me i'm just trying i'm grasping at straws right now because like clearly they don't want anyone to know about the situation that just happened here um crash site bravo and this is locust and i like that this is the top this is the this is obviously a working comms tower and it kind of mirrors the other one which is stationary um at the at the crash site so i think that's really interesting but uh yeah we have a couple of new characters one guy seems to be like a recon uh sniper you know he's got the sniper he's got the camo he also has a shotgun and a pistol so he seems well equipped to deal with whatever the hell's going to be going on and then you also have this new guy 
Lo uh, so the other one's Locust. So the name drop that someone spoiled was for a completely different character. So I'm like, what the fuck? So, um, so I'm assuming this is Felix. We'll have to wait and see because they didn't drop a name. I also don't know if these are in-house voices because I don't know if Rooster Teeth started... Like, if all of these voices are still in-house, like how Shannon McCormick voices Wash, um, Jen Brown voices, uh, Jen Brown voices Carolina, Bernie versus Church, uh, slash Epsilon. So I'm wondering if, like, I wonder if Miles is voicing anybody or Carrie, if, yeah, because they're at Rooster Teeth at this point. So I'm just, I'm just wondering... Uh, who these guys voice because they seem to have like voice modifiers like the other guys has like a deep like almost robotic -y kind of voice and I wonder if we'll see what they look like because I also mentioned that as well that like we got to see what the freelancers looked like during project freelancer and I don't think they'll ever show what the reds or blues look like because uh just because like it's been so long that everyone probably has their own personal image of what the reds and blues look like and to do that would kind of like ruin the ruin the magic so to speak so I wonder if we'll end up seeing what these guys look like like with their helmets off I, I they would have to do like the CG animation similar to like what project freelancer did and um, now that Monty at this point was working on Ruby, I don't know if they still utilize that that technology or that level of animation for this trilogy. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, it is very interesting. Like we have new characters. There's something forming and I like how it's happening in the second half. So I have something to speculate on, something to look forward to, uh, aside from obviously the Blood Gulch vibes of of the reds and blues now that doc and donut are back in the picture and uh freckles is public enemy number one so i i i i really hope i i don't i don't see things happening well for freckles and subsequently caboose because caboose is was really depressed at the start of the series uh, at the start of the of the season because of the fact that epsilon just up and left and you know that was his best friend he built him up you know what I mean? From the original to Epsilon to now Freckles, which is kind of like his coping mechanism. And if they were to destroy him, I feel like that would crush Caboose unless Epsilon were to come back at the perfect time and just like blanket all of that sorrow away from him. But now we have these two other characters. Clearly, this this canyon matters. What I'm wondering now is if Felix, I'm assuming this is Felix. I'm just going to say that unless I'm wrong. Felix and Locus. Unless these two are in factions, like warring factions, like if these are opposing mercs, because they don't have like similar armor or anything like that. And the way he was like, oh, no, you know, what I mean, when the other guy like when he saw the other guy, when he heard the other guy. So I'm just wondering, what's the objective for these two? Are they trying to eliminate all targets? You know what I mean? Foreign, foreign individuals on their planet. Are they trying to like eliminate all targets and get whatever they can on the ship? Like. I'm just wondering what the objective for these two are because clearly they're they're stalking the reds and blues up until a certain point. Clearly they can't make a move because someone like Freckles is still in the picture. So, you know, the enemy of my enemy, they're probably like, well, we're just going to wait, sit back and see what happens. And I guarantee you once Freckles is dealt with, they're going to move in. So that's another intriguing thing that's going on here. And then the reds freaking jumping in on the action so I, I wonder if these grenades are going to be heavy to the plot because I like Griff's idea with, oh, we can just move it with the with the teleport cubes. And I was like, holy shit, like, that's so cool. Like, they just found this thing and it already has, like, a pliable, like, like practical usage with, with this giant, like, giga, giga freckles. Um, and, and basically... I don't know. It's it's just like an interesting concept, and I'm just wondering if how that because it's like if the Reds get this, then there's an even bigger like then the Blues have to deal with this thing because there's gonna be a power struggle. There's gonna be a power imbalance uh, on one side or the other, and and so yeah, I'm just wondering how that's gonna play out. And so Washington has been coming back here. He didn't check the food supply in that last batch. Um, he didn't check the food supply. He was just like change of plans. I don't remember if he said change of plans before or I think he said change of plans. I don't know if he said change of plans before or after Freckles came into the picture because Freckles came into the no. He said change of plans, I think, last batch because I don't know. I don't remember if he said change of plans before or after Freckles came in. I might have to go back and watch that point for context. 
but he's clearly been doing something here and like he's creating something or making something again for him to apologize and say i'm sorry caboose makes me think that it's going to be something that's going to go against freckles and is probably going to try to take him out similar to what the reds and blues are trying to do just to get like that power struggle dealt with but i i just don't know what he would be doing that would go behind caboose's back that way um to where he would have to say uh, like where he would have to apologize because caboose considered him his friend more than before anybody else you know what i mean like he's caboose's caboose's first friend as well so it just it would just suck you know what i mean it would just suck if washington who caboose considered a friend when he didn't even realize the reds and blues were his friend at the time would betray him and kill caboose's new best friend so i i just don't know how that all is going to pan out how that's all going to work out i don't really know what washington's plan is we have these two new characters we have like some mysterious plot that's forming revolving them too i now have context about you know the the reds and blues being pardoned and being shipwrecked here and how that happened i love that donut and and doc are back in the picture i'm so excited for the next batch especially if these two characters uh become more of the center state like i know that they've been teased the last couple bits right that one scene with Locus was really cool, and I I just can't wait for new characters to be involved and incorporated. And I'm wondering, if, like again, are they freelancers? Are they mercenaries? Are they just like general soldiers of this planet? Are they part of Caron? Or you know what I mean? Are they the part of UNSC? I'm just I have so many questions. I just want to learn more and 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 see what is really going on behind the scenes with these two. I don't think at this point I don't think we're gonna get Epsilon or Carolina until season twelve, which is really really freaking unfortunate like really really unfortunate um i don't know if it's because like season one of ruby would be going like production for ruby would be going on at the same time as this and i know that jen brown uh, jen brown was voicing pira at that time so maybe but it it didn't seem like it was oh, like really that much between or like it would be that much because technically uh shannon mccormick was going between washington and ospin so I, I just don't understand or maybe it just wasn't in the plot at the time for us to see what they were doing versus what the reds and blues are doing introducing these new characters figuring out how they're going to get out of this canyon and so on and so forth so maybe that's what miles figured first like let's establish some old school blood gold chronicles vibes let's eventually get everybody back together Let's create this new plot. Let's introduce a couple of these new characters. And the plot for season 11 is how are the reds and blues going to get out of this canyon? And how are we going to forward the plot in that way that it's satisfying for reds and blues without us understanding or knowing what Epsilon and Carolina are doing? So that's what I'm assuming uh, Miles decided to go for um with season with season with season 11 which i'm really really enjoying uh now that like i've just been stimulated so much more from doc uh lopez original uh donut and these these two new characters so um yeah that's that's my reaction those are my initial uh thoughts so far but i love to know what you guys think be sure as always to leave your comments down in the uh, in the in the comment section down below of anything that i talked about my reaction my thoughts what you guys are looking forward to what you guys are excited about regarding this batch no spoilers please spoilers will be banned like straight up outright so i don't want to have to deal with that so hopefully you guys respect that um i at, at most i just got spoiled on a name and it wasn't even the name of the character in question so someone accidentally spoiled the name of a different character which i'm assuming is the other character that was introduced in this batch so unfucking believable but nonetheless i i enjoyed the batch thank you guys so much for watching as always leave your thoughts in the comment section and as a final send off i'd like to give an extra special thank you to all of my patreon backers who have been enjoying these early access videos especially over on patreon.com slash murder of birds and an extra special thank you goes to everyone in the seasonal maiden tier and higher for your kindness generosity support and uh, for those of you who have been, you know, supporting me through and through, especially with the return of RVB content, and that goes to Amy Burgess, Armadillo, Blue Rat 137, Louis A. Sandoval, Luke Marshall, Ride the Lightning, Scott Porter, Super Mona Man, The Disturbed Guy, Diesel 75, Daniel Burns, Ezra Lee, Gotakai, Ian Dodd, Jamie Coleman, Matthew Trapp, Michael, and Winter Schnee. So thank you guys once again for the support. I really hope you guys enjoy the reactions. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section, and I will see you guys all in the next batch. Take care.